Watch what you say. It's being recorded. <laughs> well, it's good to be here this morning. It's good to have you all come out. <clears throat> Happy Father's Day again to all of you. I was listening to the radio the other night on the way home. For some guy, I don't remember his name. He was one of those talk radio people, and he was saying that it seems to be that on Mother's Day, you go out to eat. But on Father's Day, most of the families, they want to cook on the grill. And so why is it that the mothers get to go out to eat on Mother's Day, and on Father's Day, the father's got to cook? <laughs> and I thought, you know what, that, that, that's just kind of true. But... Um, I, 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 it's a good day, but we should be, you know, we should, uh, every day is Father's Day, yeah. really, as it is Mother's Day. That, uh, But we like to take this day to say thank you for all that you've done for, for you men that are here. And um, we know that uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a hard thing, I guess, to be a dad if you have a kid like me. Um, but... Uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm just so thankful for the dad that I do have. He won't be able to hear me probably, so, but um, I, I'm thankful for that. So um, today, you know, on Father's Day, and I don't have to tell you this is something that you know, especially today, if you're a father, then sometime today you're going to reflect not only on your own father, and, the, and the, the qualities and the things that you've seen in him, but you're going to also probably uh, reflect on your own self and, ex and think, well, how, how did I do as a father? Or, or maybe you will ask yourself or think about some of the things. How many know that fathers, us earthly fathers, are not always perfect and do make mistakes? But um, I think that's a day that we just can... Time to just chill out, dads. This is not going to be all about you, okay? <laughs> Sorry. I guess I, I probably even shouldn't say these last two things here, but I think that um, fathers on a day like today that maybe would answer this question or think of this yourself do my children know do my children know that I love them and uh, because so many times as fathers it's something that you don't usually just say all the time you think they just know it you know and um, if you're here this morning and, and you're a father and you have any kind of distance between any of your children I just want you to know it's never too late it's never too late to make up for that. I know that sometimes, uh, oh well, I'm going to stop there. Okay, open up your Bibles, if you will, to the Gospel of Luke. And I want to show you this morning that Jesus used this method of reflection um, when he was speaking to his disciples, and what he was wanting to, them to do was make a comparison. Okay? And what he wanted, or his goal was to help them, to help his disciples um, to understand one of the characteristics of our Heavenly Father by saying, now look at yourself as a father, okay? And I'm going to show that to you. He did this by asking them a question. And basically what he was saying was, consider this. You know, sometimes we need it when, when we're hearing something or 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 something is being put in front of us, it's always good if somebody gets our attention and says, now listen, Terry, I want you to consider this. Just think about this. And so by asking them some questions, he was causing these men and, uh, and all of us then to stop for just a moment and think. And so I've listed it this way. This is out of Luke chapter 11, and I'm going to start, start in just verse 11 with the first question. That question is this. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, 
Will you give him a stone? Now that's, just stop there, that's a question. And I think that, that stop for just a moment and don't, don't, um, don't go over that. This is a question that Jesus asked his disciples because he wants us, at the end of all of this, you men and women, to understand how it is that we can look at our own lives and, 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 and learn something from that. If a, so now you fathers, sort of you mothers too, because, you know, hey, when the kids are hungry, who do they come to? Mom. But anyway, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? All right, dads. <coughs> dads. I mean, what's he saying? If your son is asking for something to eat, are you giving, going to give him something that's not going to help him or do him any good? So all of you right here know right now the answer, I mean, probably is no. It might be thinking in the back of your head, I'd like to sometimes, right? No. So the question deserves that you acknowledge it, and at least you've addressed that. We've addressed that now with all of us, haven't we? We would not do that, right? Amen. Mothers, fathers would not do that. So then, he can, then there's question number two. Or if he asks a fish... Will he, for a fish, give him a serpent? Same question. If a son shall ask a, uh, for a fish of any of you that is a father, are you going to give him a serpent? No. We got a hearty no there. We are not, or you men and women alike, are not going to do that. And then chap, or, or verse 12 goes on to say, with one, there's three questions he asks, and he, want, he just wants them to think. Now, think then, or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? So, then again, maybe you'd like to sometimes. <laughs> but no, and, and I wondered about that, and I, I was just reading last night, and just this is just a little thing to add in there, that um, a crocodile or an alligator, I guess, lay eggs. And they're not much bigger than like a goose egg. Now, if you give your son an egg that is not unformed, that would be edible to him. But if you wait until that crocodile was formed and, and ready to hatch, it's not going to be something that they would be able to eat. And that's, that makes a little more sense to me. If, if your son asks for an egg, are you going to give him a scorpion? Are you going to give him something that's already, like nobody eats formed eggs, right? That's wrong. They do. Oops. Huh? They do. Huh? Yes. Now, this I'm just, hey, uh, I just got to share every little bit of knowledge I can. Our old pastor, John, had a brother that lived in the Philippines and was married to a, a, a woman from the Philippines. And um, they lived for a short time over in Bluffton, <coughs> There was a pond in the middle of this, these houses, and they had ducks that were laying eggs and noticed that the ducks were not, the eggs, where did the eggs go? Somebody was stealing the eggs. Well, they caught her. And what she would do is take the egg, <coughs> right when it was, on, when she could tell that that egg was ready to hatch, and she would take it before it hatched, put it down into boiling water and boil it, and then crack it open and eat that formed duck right out of the egg wow. and that's a delicacy just to add this I mean I know you don't care about it but you know what they uh, caught fishing or they caught fish too and they found they had cut off the heads of the fish to clean them wrapped them up in newspaper and threw them in the trash and she dug them out of the trash put them in water and ate them boiled them so you know they might think we're weird eating pizza right so anyway that <laughs> so all of you have decided in your minds that if your child asks 
you for something. And these are things that a child would need, right? A provision that they would need. Then you would have to all agree that no, you would not turn them away. Right? Amen. Okay, now. Then he asks the question number four. And that's in verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? This same um, scenario is given in Matthew, and Matthew says the same thing except he said, how much more shall your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? And so what we're finding out here then is what is Jesus wanting us to know about our Heavenly Father? Take a, look at your, take a look at yourself. Take a look at the father you know that raised you. Take a look at the father or mother or parent that you are. And if most of us, and I think almost, I, I'm not looking at here and, and saying that we're not, but most of us are going to do what for our children? Anything. Right? anything that is in their best interest, right? Anything that is good for them. We're not going to let them starve. We're not going to let them go without clothes. And the basic necessities, we're going to put a roof over their head. We're going to put shoes on their feet. And we're going to give them food to eat that is even pleasant to them. We're not, you know, and, and so, yes, if you then, and here's the question that Jesus asked his disciples. If you then... Know how to give good gifts to your children. <coughs> how much more then shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? You as a parent have a desire, do you not? And the ability to supply the things that your children need. Now, when I say to supply the things that your children need, I guess most of the time we think of this little one sitting back here on his dad's lap and <clears throat> that that's easy because he has to depend on dad to give him things, right, that, that he needs. However, when they, the bigger they get, the more they think they can decide what they need and and what they think they need isn't always what they really need, right? It's only what they want. <laughs> hey, I got an amen there. <laughs> hey, yeah, well, we're getting through here. <laughs> now, I, I, was, I was, guess I was thinking about one of my own kids who are grown and, and they're adults. And um, if one of them came to me and said, I'm broke and we have no food in the house to feed the kids, would you give me $30 so we can go buy a pizza? How, I got the same reaction. Most of you are thinking no. Right? I'll give you five pounds of hamburger, a bag of potatoes, a gallon of milk, and a loaf of bread. And maybe that will get you through to payday. And so we as parents can still supply the things that our children need or help supply them if we can. But we put a little bit of wisdom behind it, and, and so it is with God and us. I think that, that when we pray sometimes or when we ask, God will always hear our prayers, and maybe, he'll, maybe it's, it's, it's that kind of same thing. No, I'm not going to give you $30 for a pizza, but I'm going to do this and this and this and this, and this is going to get you where you need to be or where you need to go. So God has assumed the role of a father to us. And that's what we want to hear today. That's what we want to learn today and take home with us today in our minds that God is saying in these things that he has assumed that role of a father to us and that we can look at him as a father. Now we've always said and we know that he's father God. He is, you know, he is our father. But can you look at this characteristic and get a deeper meaning out of that characteristic that God has in his feelings for us? Because he, has, he says he is our father. He's taken on that same role that you do as a parent. See, I can ask you 
what would you do for your child? And you would be able to say what? Anything. I can. Anything. And yet, we as Christians sometimes don't think that God looks at us the same way. That he is looking at us that same way. Oh, there's Charles. You know, what can I, what does Charles need for me today? Okay, so God claims us as his children, and his concern for us is a fatherly, same as, or equivalent, or like a father or mother's love for their children. His love for us in his tenderness. And goodness excels that of an earthly parent. And I just keep going back to those three words right there. How much more? How much more? Now let me, let me have you think about this. If, if our parents took care of us, right? And we took care of our children... How much more is God going to take care of us? Amen? Amen. Amen. So our Father will not give us stone for bread. He's not going to give us a serpent for fish. Much more He is going to give us good things. And I was thinking about how much more he can give to us than we can give to our own children because we can feed their bodies and we can put a roof over their head and we can, we can do all the things that a parent needs to do, right? But God can feed the body and the spirit. There's more than just clothes. There's more than just the shoes that we put on. He can do that. And how much more shall your Father, your Heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Now, when you're hungry and you ask for those heavenly things, is God going to give you just enough to stop the hunger? Or is he going to give you enough to fill you up? What do you do for your kids? You give them, if you can, enough to fill them up, right? And so that's when Jesus is saying that, so much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. You know, I, I, I have that hunger in me, and that's what I need to do is ask. Now, I just want to give you a, a picture. My little Amanda, when she was a baby... She could eat and eat and eat so much. And I, as a mother, just shoveled it in, shoveled it in, shoveled it in. You know, and my mom watched her one time when she was about seven months old. And um, she said, um, I was feeding her, and she just, I just kept, it was baby, she was probably baby food because I would have sent that if mom was taking care of her. And she just kept eating and eating and eating and she didn't ever quit eating and then all of a sudden she went uh, and it just oh half of it came back out you know well that's what I want God to do for me when he feeds my spirit I want him to fill me up until I can't take any more and so God then is the one who looks at us as children he is more knowing he has more wisdom. He's more kind. How much more? Oh, he's more kind. He's more merciful. How much more? He's just more merciful, more ready to give good things than the earthly, we earthly parents are. I was thinking about a, a, a young woman that I know that, that uh, used to work over at Bluffton who in, in a week or two is going to be giving her kidney, one of her kidneys, to her mother. And, um, and um, thinking of all of those things that we hear are, are 
Oh, I don't know. It just touched me so much that she was willing to do that and that she would go to that extent to help her mother and that the, the love that is between, you know, that mother and that child and um, what, what, a, what a good thing that is. If you, being evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will God... You think God knows how? Because it says if you being evil, then you know how to give good things. So you don't have to be good to give good things, really? How much more is your Father going to give you? See, Jesus wants us to remember this Father characteristic. And I know, I know, I know you guys have heard this before. But if every time we could go to the Father and we went before Him, and in our heart we could remember the love that we have for our own children, and then know that He is looking at us the same way. It's just, that's what this message is all about. This, this characteristic that God has, and all of this, all of this, that He said... Why did Jesus just start talking like that out of the clear blue sky? He didn't. I want to read to you just um, one verse. This is, is, is the beginning of, of chapter 11, verse 1, because his disciples had a question for him. And that is um, 11, verse 1, And it came to pass that as he was praying, he was talking about Jesus in a certain place, when he had ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. And verse 2 says, And he said to them, When ye pray, say this, Our Father, which art in heaven, when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. See, we're not coming before a God or to a God or standing before a God that is estranged from us. We're not standing before someone who doesn't hear us or someone who doesn't care for us. We're standing before a God that calls us His children and loves us the same way we love our own children. Sometimes we think of God, or, or sometimes others do, and sometimes I don't, most of the time. But this is how we are to look at, at God. If we're one of His children, we have to. He's a good God. He delights in supplying His children's needs. Think of you as a father, or think of yourself as a mother. I, I, I don't know how many of you, but a lot of times to me, if I cook something big and juicy and delicious, man, uh, I, got, I don't even have to cook it. I, I bought some ice cream a couple weeks ago at the Dollar General store because it was on sale, and the kids had ate me out of this ice cream. And so I had four kids in front of me, all want an ice cream. It was late night, and I said, no, don't you guys know the eat out of the box, one spoon method? Sit down. And so they all sat down at the table, these four little girls. I said, okay, who goes first? Grandma goes first. Oh. I, and, you know, I wouldn't do this in the winter time if I was afraid of get, getting the cold. That's probably why I have the cold. So, I, I, you know, I dip down, I get a bite of ice cream, and then we go this way, you know, and so I'm digging that ice cream out and they're, you know, and by the time I get that spoon, because they know it's coming that way, by the time I get that spoon up there in the mouth, they're going, <laughs> you know, and I give them big bites and I didn't realize how I was giving them big bites, you know, they were all getting head brain freeze, <laughs> you know, but I delight and putting those pleasant things and giving those pleasant little things to my children and to my grandchildren. Our God delights 
right? He delights in giving us things that we ask Him. His goodness and His willingness to give us good things. Then I noticed it, it, it didn't say, we don't look at him as, as saying to us, when you've been good, then I'm going to give you bread to eat. But for now you get a stone. No. I used to tell my kids, if you don't work, you don't eat. Because I wanted them to clean the house up. And... They did. And, but I'd have sooner or later, I would have let them eat sooner or later, you know. But God isn't telling us, I'm going to give you bread to eat when you're good, Charles. And when you're not, I'm not going to feed you. We don't do that to our own kids, do we? It'd be a lot cheaper, wouldn't it, Amy? Huh? You know, I, I just, but what he says to us, I'll give you bread to eat. For one reason. You know what that reason is? Because I'm your father. That's my job. That I'm your father. That's why. Do you ever just go to God only when you need something? Do your kids ever go to you only when they need something? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can talk about Amanda. She's not here. But I, t I told you before in front of her, hey, Mom, I love you. Oh, and it's Mom, I love you. You know she wants something, right? But you know what? There's times we do the same thing to God, right? Oh, God, I know I haven't talked to you for a while, man. I, I love you, man. Will you give me some bread? You know, whatever. <laughs> Weeks ago, or I don't know how long ago it was, I told Dad, well, my grandson, AJ, we are not allowed to see him. And I had been told that if I tried to see him, that, that his mother would call the cops. And so I was telling Dad, I'm going anyway. And if um, she calls the cops, I might go to jail. And Dad said, well, if you go to jail, I'll come and get you. <laughs> and I said, well, why would you do that? And he said, because that's what dads do. And I thank God for a good dad. And I thank him, my Heavenly Father, for being that kind of dad to me. That he does it just because we're his children. Galatians 4, 6 says, and, and because your sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, we have the spirit of his son in our hearts. And that's why our hearts cry, Abba, Father. Abba just is another name for, for Father. And you may stand as, as we get ready to go. And as you go, I hope that I really don't have, when, when, I, when I started out with this, I didn't really have a certain purpose or a certain direction. Only then, mostly to honor our own fathers, you men here that have done such a good job, and um, how we, we feel, you know, how I... I feel about my dad and how you you felt with you all we have that and then as a father for for you to be able to say you know no I never did that I may have made some mistakes but when my kid asked me for bread they got bread and when they asked for this they they got what they needed and so as I was preparing for this, I, 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 my heart just turned. And I realized, and, and I've known it before, but I thought it was good for us to remember that with those same feelings that we have for our children, 
God has for us. Amen? Spy your heads. Father God, we just thank you for today, Father. We thank you for the, the fathers that you have given us. Um, that they have taken care of us, Father. And we just thank you that we today have seen your heart. This characteristic in you that says you are my children and I love you in the same way. Not because of anything great that you do or not because you walk the line, but because that's what fathers do. And so, Father God, let your children today just sit back and take in some of that love that you've given them. I pray that you give them a good day, Father, and that you take them this week and protect them because that's what fathers do. And you be with each and every one of them, Father God, this day, that this day that they would have a new way of looking at you. And, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Okay, you may be dismissed. Oh, wait. I didn't pray. Sit down a minute.